My name is Matthew Jabara, and on this episode of The Break of Nook, we will be discussing the themes of the past presented by the Grim Grimwood in his best-selling novel, Replay. Sit back and enjoy. I found that the best place to start in the evaluation of the Replay book was in the life of the author, Ken Grimwood. Born in 1944 in Dothan, Alabama, and raised in Pensacola, Florida, he was called by his sister Teresa, a brilliant, beautiful human being who knew that the best of fiction always has a message. This shows in what his parents said that when he was a kid, he always had a passion for the unreal and fiction as a whole, always finding himself reading science fiction novels. He went from a private boarding school called Indian Springs School to the Sorbonne in Paris, and then to Emory College just downtown in Atlanta. Once graduating from Emory, he moved down to Florida to work in news at WLAK in the city of Wakeland. Soon after, he moved to New York to study psychology at Bard College. While at Bard, Grimwood observed a series of short fiction stories that were published in the student's application, Observer, in 1969. After graduating in 1970, he then went on to work for a radio station in Los Angeles by the title KFWB News 980, where he worked as an editor. While working there, he released three books titled Breakthrough, 2 Plus 2, and Replay. Replay received by far the most attention, allowing Grimwood to quit his job and pursue writing full-time. He had one last successful book after this, titled Into the Deep, before he eventually retired. He ended up dying in the year 2002, married once with no children. And a quote from Ken Grimwood in the book Replay, All life includes loss. It's taken me many, many years to learn to deal with that, and I don't expect I'll ever be fully resigned to it. But that doesn't mean we have to turn away from the world or stop striving for the best that we can do and be. We owe that much to ourselves, at least, and we deserve whatever measure of good may come from it. Replay was by far Grimwood's biggest success in his writing. It was so successful that it won the 1988 World Fantasy Award. The book's main premise is similar to that of Harold Ramis' Groundhog Day, where the main protagonist, Jeff Winston, died of a heart attack at 43, but he finds that he woke up again at age 18 studying at Emory University with all of his memories of the future still intact. The book then explores the obvious question that arises from an event like this. What now? What would Jeff change about what he did with his life to not make the same mistakes that he made in his previous existence? Would chasing material things make him happier? He attempts to become happier through amassing wealth and material things, through gambling and investment, knowing who is going to win races and which companies are going to rise. Spoiler, this chase does not bring him happiness. He finds himself rich and hating his life, surrounded by shallow others who follow him sheerly due to his wealth. He ends up becoming married, but having the relationship fall apart as he continues to chase a never-ending lust for more, trying to find the happiness that seemed to so narrowly evade him. He then finds himself dead again on the same day at the age of 43 of a heart attack and is forced to restart again. He again falls into the trap of chasing unsatisfying wealth and tries different relationships until he soon dies unhappy again. At the age of 43, he then continues to wake up at, uh, at later times at, and live shorter and shorter lives until eventually he's reliving his death again and again. This continues for about 10 lives until he finds himself not dead. He continues with his original life, not knowing what the future holds. Looking back at what he's done, though, he observes that his happiest life was his original when he did not know what the future had in store. This is where the book cuts off, leaving you to wonder what will come of the rest of Jeff's days, with the question of how he will improve his life with the knowledge he has gleaned from his journey. Here to discuss the book with me is my mom, Betty Jabara. Betty, what were your thoughts on the book? Well, it's one of my favorite books of all time because I don't think you can read the book and not wonder, in some ways, how would you do things differently if you had a chance to live over again? Right. Would you make the same choices? You know, because we all wonder about our choices and the paths not taken. And how things could be different. So it's a very thought-provoking read. 
that really made me look inside myself and wonder and ultimately come up with a decision that the people in my lives are either is are too important and I couldn't live without and therefore it would never be worth to ever go back and try again perfect so what did you think was the main message that Ken Grimwood was trying to get across in the book well I'd say at the end of the day I think that there are several poignant messages um, one would be there are plenty ways to mess up your life um, just because you reverse some decisions doesn't mean that you won't make bad decisions or worse and some of them could be not turn out as well as they did the first time uh, number two that money and power don't necessarily make a person happy you know we say it but immediately I think everyone thinks that the first thing they would do is go back and solve for all their money problems but that definitely did not make him any happier the second time around right um, number three I think would be that timing and relationship is everything you know, when he went back and tried to find his wife um, the second time around, then at first she thought he was like a creepy stalker, and so it was just the timing was off because it wasn't exactly the same. And he kind of knew too much about her and everything like that, so... It timing, came off as creepy. Yeah, timing is everything in a relationship. Um, and the number four I would say is that there are a myriad of ways that life can turn out. And all of them likely have happiness and sadness. You know, there's no thing that you could choose that would make life all happiness with no sadness with it. And without the sadness, the happiness wouldn't be nearly as meaningful. And um, one of the other premises I was thinking about, uh, getting ready to talk to you about it, was that you're really in control of your own destiny. And if you aren't happy, you have the power to do something about it. Um, I think it took... Um, the character in the book a long time to get to the point where he understood that somewhat and that he kept trying and he tried so many different ways to find happiness and it, it does I think the, the one of the underlying themes is just figuring out is that what is the meaning of it all and is there really a meaning the book was written just over 31 years ago and yet it still feels like every theme presented is still relevant today what are your thoughts on this I mean I think the book was an incredibly fun read and I never wanted to put down. I mean, Jeff isn't perfect, which makes him more fun. He wastes several of his lives and ends up with more blood on his hands as he tries to alter the course of history, but that's part of what makes him more relatable. He may be forewarned, but that doesn't make him be forearmed. And I think those are consistent themes and the fact that it's set back in history, it doesn't have to be today because it deals with the years from 19... 63 to sometime in the 80s right um, so I think it, the author does a good job illuminating the characters dialogue and questions about his predicament you know without tying it to any specific time you know I think it is interesting that it's still relevant because it goes back to the meaning of life speaking of the meaning of life what do you think can be added to it by the lessons learned along Jeff's journey well, I think the main thing is that to appreciate what you have along the way because it wouldn't necessarily be better if you were given a chance to do it over as he discovers throughout the novel. So in conclusion, you've said you've really enjoyed it, but what do you see as some of the shortcomings of the book? Well, in my mind, the biggest shortcoming is probably at the end of his life when Jeff doesn't die but instead carries on with his original life. I don't think he'd actually would be any better equipped to deal with it than the first time because he didn't use all of those extra lives to learn any new lessons or enrich his knowledge. He just focused on the wrong things and chasing the material things. All right, now I'd just like to thank you for coming on to our little show here. Well, thanks for having me. I have to say I'm really glad that you read the book and you enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite thought-provoking books. All right. All right, that's about all the time we have left in this episode of The Breaketh Nook. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on our next book. For the time being, have a good night.